Now, have you ever dreamt of a place to stay to get away from it all? Maybe a second home in the country? Well, what if that meant paying double the council tax of your neighbours who live in the area permanently? The government thinks it's a good idea and it's part of their levelling up agenda to give councils the powers to bring it in. Well, this week I visited a part of the East Midlands where it's a big talking point. With stunning scenery, the Derbyshire Dales is undoubtedly an attractive place to live. But should those with second homes here pay more in council tax? It's something the district council is considering following the government's proposal to give local authorities the power to charge up to double the amount as part of the regeneration and levelling up bill. The former Conservative-run council led a consultation with local residents. Now the leader of the Liberal Democrats, which became the biggest group on the council after the local elections, is also open to the idea. I am led to believe that the majority of people that responded to that consultation are fully in favour of it. One in 20 of our homes in Derbyshire Dales are either holiday homes, um, second homes or just left vacant uh, and there is a need for housing for our families in local villages and it's pushing the price up too much. Whilst the results of the consultation are still to be officially announced, I spoke to a few people in Bakewell to see what they think. They're actually denying other people the possibility of getting a home. So yeah, charge them. I think they should. Yeah. Why do I, you? Because there's a housing shortage for everybody, everywhere, basically. I'm from Dorset, Penny's from Norfolk, but I have the same problem. I live in a small village and over 50% now are holiday homes. So there's nowhere for the youngsters to buy because the house prices have shot up. The people who come and use their holidays um, homes come at the weekends, they bring everything with them, so they're not contributing to buying things locally in the community. But not everyone is convinced. Julie runs a home fragrance shop in Bakewell. You'll not get as many tourists in the, in the village. Um, and again, it will, it will just impact people's spending in, in local businesses and small businesses that, you know, such as ours. The levelling up and regeneration bill had been expected to receive royal assent last month, but has now been pushed back, leaving councils unsure of when the changes will come into force. Well, a few opinions there. So what impact could a council tax premium actually make? Well, Kate Faulkner is an expert on the property market and we asked her if this plan would help deter second home owners. From their perspective, if it was me, I'd be thinking, well, I'd be happy to pay. Um, and for those that it might put off, that property is going up for a quarter of a million, 300,000, 400,000 pounds. Well, the first time buyers aren't going to suddenly magically be able to afford these properties. And that's where I think the, 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 the problem lies is that to try and stop people from buying second homes to think that that's going to help local people, these properties are already priced out of the range of local people who have got local jobs on local wages. People need homes. They need decent roofs over their heads. And we haven't built enough homes. And worse still, we haven't built enough homes that are affordable for the people that want to live in these in you know beautiful areas. The problem is the lack of social homes that have been built and these huge waiting lists, which are rarely talked about. And I haven't yet seen a plan of how those are going to be reduced. Reduce that, everything else will fall into place and you won't have to worry about buy to let landlords and you won't have to worry about second home ownership. Those thoughts there from Kate Faulkner, a property expert. Now, we heard uh, in the film uh, where I spoke to the uh, the leader of the Liberal Democrats group, you know, essentially in favour of uh, the second home council tax in Derbyshire Dales. It was something that the Conservative run council was also in favour of. Um, but, you know, we heard from the expert there that actually it's just papering the cracks and what we need is more affordable housing. You know, Nigel, does this actually make any difference, uh, raising the council tax charge for second homeowners? 
Well, I think it's a power we're quite rightly giving to local areas to choose whether they want to use. I, yeah, I think there are some communities where you know, they're very attractive to holidaymakers that does hollow out the local community, and this is one way of deterring that, or at least getting some contribution back to local people from the use of a house like that. And you can see that Derbyshire Dales, you know, with a national park running through it, is a hugely attractive tourist destination, and this is a particular problem for them. So I think it will, it will help a bit for them. Obviously, they have challenges because you can't build large amounts of housing in a, in a national park, so it's, there's no easy alternative solution for them. So it's a, a tool they can use. I'm, I think we should be careful because you know, I'm, we regularly get presentations on how important the tourist economy is to Derbyshire and certainly to many of those areas around the Derbyshire Dales. So we don't want to go so far we put tourists off, but equally we, don't, you know, we do want vibrant local communities. OK, I mean, it's about balance in many ways. I don't know, Alex, you're the parliamentary lead for levelling up. Um, this is a conservative idea. And I have to admit, when I was in Bakewell, um, you know, it's not a scientific survey, but pretty much everyone backed this idea. Would Labour? Yeah, when we looked at it in the Bill Committee, we supported it. I think it's the right thing. I, you know, I, I agree with what Kate Faulkner was advocating for in terms of building more houses. I think you can do both. I think my only concern with the policy as it is at the moment is that it generally... It, it's not addressing the whole problem because there's a difference between a second home, something that people may go to for the occasional weekend largely lying empty, and then this really significant growth in short-term holiday lets. I won't name the websites, everybody knows what we're talking about because it's not fair to kind of pick on one. Those are really changing communities, some of it for the better because of the money they're bringing into the area, but also it's no point being a brilliant place people want to come to if there's no one to work at the local pub because no one lives there. There's no, no food on because the chef's been priced out of the street. So, so, so what do you do then? Well, I think you have to give councils, local communities, greater powers to regulate that market, to say, yes, we think that there's a need for, for these and this is how many we're talking about, but that we don't want every property to be one. We don't think that's sustainable. I think that's finding the right balance between business, between tourism, but also the, the, the nature of local communities. OK. Um, and, you know, this um, policy is part of the levelling up and regeneration bill. Uh, Nigel, last week on this show, your fellow Conservative MP, Ben Bradley, said that in order for the Conservative Party to try and win at the next general election, you have to deliver on your promises. Um, and I know that you are among 10 East Midlands MPs, including Ben, who've just written to the Prime Minister to try and speed up this bill. If you don't get the bill you know, into law, it shows that you can't deliver. Yeah, I'm afraid Parliament doesn't move as fast as we'd all like at times. I, I don't see any particular doubt this bill will, will get on the statute book in the relatively near future and we can get on with those powers. But I, I agree, that's why I signed Ben's letter that we want to get it done now. The, the bill has been through most of its parliamentary processes. And let's just get it finished. Well, Alex, I, you were... Yeah, I turned my hair out a little bit when I read that letter because... You know, we said at the beginning that the levelling up of regeneration bill is full of lots of different things. Some of them controversial, some of them much less controversial, like, you know, the combined authorities are things that we're looking for in this region. Why they bundled up really important things that we have a deadline for if we're going to have an election for them next May, with loads of things about planning and house building, which we know are controversial, may have different views, but that's part of it. And they've gummed up their own uh, timetable. So I find it a little rich for kind of government MPs to say, oh, goodness me, why hasn't this moved more quickly? They, when they could have passed the most of this in weeks and instead they've kind of double six themselves, which once okay, again. Okay, criticism of the process yeah. there. I mean, uh, in terms of housing, in particular, affordable housing. Housing, which is something that you know was brought up by Kate Faulkner, but also um, when I was speaking uh, to people in the Derbyshire Dales, Kate Faulkner says that there are 20,000 people waiting for a home in Derbyshire alone, Nigel. How do you cut down on those waiting lists? I mean, it's worth saying that those aren't people who are homeless, they're people who are waiting for a social house, so they may well be living, living, living somewhere else. The only solution to that is, is to build more houses. I mean, I, when I first became a candidate in Amber Valley, we needed 35,000, I think we now need 42,000. We've seen a 20% increase in less than 20 years. So there have been a lot of houses built, but we need to keep finding more. But the way to do that is to get communities on side you know, build the houses in the right place. Use but how do you do that? Because, the right well, you know, there, I mean, there are measures in this in this bill for that. But the, you know, the real danger is every time you have a big housing application, you get loads of opposition to it. So I, I think we need to show people that, that we need it. It's for their children, for their grandchildren as well, and try and have community-driven planning. So we say yes, we'll happily have houses on these sites. We want these kind of houses to suit new families or slightly bigger families. And here's the infrastructure that we need with it. If we get all that in the right way, we can take places with us and not have every planning application being a battle which is how they okay. feel. All right, we've run out of time on this one. Thank you.